Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, I haven't shot a video in a long time. Um, it's been much year, had a lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> but uh, meanwhile, I got the 78 painted. I got a lot of work done onto it. I got some of the wiring done, the engine in it, transmission in it. And um, was just kind of trying to give me a little update. <coughs> Sorry. Because um, I haven't done it for a while. And I, uh, I'm going to get back at it. Um, like I said, I uh, had a lot of stuff going on. My wife was uh, diagnosed with cancer. So all summer, in and out of the doctors and treatments and stuff. And, but uh, it's about a week before Christmas. And uh, I'm going to get back into it after the holidays. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't film or show you on the 78 that I'm going to. I mean, I didn't show you any paint tips and, um, you know, wiring. I'm, I still got some wiring to do. We've got a uh, wiring harness that uh, is basically plug and play, kind of. I mean, uh, from painless, from factory, you know, just for factory setup. She's not doing a whole lot of extra on this um but there are some things that you have to wire on your own because they give you extra length depending on how you want to route the wiring or whatnot so um i did a lot of that and, and a lot of that was there's some of it under the dash but a lot of it was under the hood you know uh where you want your alternator left side right side starter um solenoid um, distributor fuel pressure you know sensor or we're probably going to put a mechanical on here but I went ahead and you know wired that up anyway stuff like that um, got the wiring harness ran from the front all the way to the back and you can see it's painted now um, I just got the front fenders kind of mocked on there but that's the color she wanted, like a uh, blue metallic pearl. When you get out in the, in the sun, it's got a little bit of pearl, not a lot. I mean, it doesn't shift and change color like pearls do. But you can see a little bit of it in there. And um, I painted that back in April, I think, the end of April. And um, did a little buffing polish, and I still got some more to do on it. Um, you got a little dirt and debris into the paint because I, I work in the shop. So I basically just kind of built a little paint booth in the shop and um, painted in here. But a little dirt and debris got into it. Nothing that can't really be sanded and buffed, it out, and buffed out. But um, but that's the color of it, and I got the rear bumper on. I still got some of the front nose to paint, spoilers to paint. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> uh, I got the heater box in. We put a delete box on the front. Sorry, I got something in my throat. And uh, deleted the AC unit. She just wanted the heater in it, got the blower motor in it. So when we ordered a wiring harness from Painless, we ordered one for a 78 Camaro without AC instead of with AC. And there's a little bit of difference. There's a, a few, a, a few uh, minor, you know, differences in it. So if you're ever wanting to do that, um, you know, just keep in mind there's a, a few minor changes. Not, it, but it's not too bad. Um, so after the holidays after new year's i'm gonna get back into this i haven't done much to it since probably october because the customer which isn't my sister i think i told you that before i uh, didn't want to put a lot of money into it until after the holidays which you know i totally understand but um so after the new year's i got the whole front suspension out from under it and uh i cut an inch and a half off the springs to try to give it a little drop. Now keep in mind, um, 
an inch and a half off the springs will actually be two inches on the ground, two inch drop. So if you cut an inch and a half off the spring, it's not gonna be an inch and a half drop. There's a little bit, there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, so if you cut an inch or an inch and a half off the spring, you're talking probably about a two inch drop. And then you got to shim the upper, you know, patrol arm and stuff to try to get the caster camera and stuff like that. Right? But I'm waiting for her after the holidays. She's going to order a kit for this. It's going to have inner, outer tie rods, upper, and lower ball joints. It's going to have the uh, upper um, control arm bushings, lower control arm bushing, everything to it. You know what I mean? So we'll get that back on there and um, get dropped on the ground. And I'll probably do a video on that in case you're not familiar because uh, it's getting the old bushings out were uh, a little tricky. I already did it, but I'll kind of go through and show you a little bit about it. And installing them, uh, you know, there's certain things you got to do just because of the way the upper and lower control arms are made from the manufacturer. It's. <clears throat> Kind of cheap, cheesy, but you know, whatever. So we'll do that. And then after that, we're going to um, probably finish up some wiring in, a, in the uh, uh, doghouse in the engine compartment. Uh, we want to put the uh, brake booster brake and the master cylinder in there, uh, get the blower motor mounted permanently um outside of that we can put the front fenders on start routing the wire like we need to and uh make it look good make it look nice and clean but uh i'll give you a little walk around and show you and uh we'll see what we can come you know see if you like it or... all right but here's the paint job it's like a like i said a blue metallic type pearl um, I still got to do some buffing and polishing on it, but it doesn't look too bad. I didn't want to do too much buffing and polishing on it because we still got to assemble it. You know, a lot of the buffing and polishing will be like a final assembly. Um, I saw, like I said, I still got to paint the rear spoiler and uh, the front nose. <clears throat> but. That's it. It's got a nice, good, clean gap on the doors. Long here and along the bottom. I'm not going to get down there and show you, but you know what I mean. And uh, we got the engine transmission in it. Like I said, I got some of the wiring routed for the engine. I um, also got to, you know, do some of the wiring for the alternator, but for the uh, starter and you know stuff like that. I pretty much got it and then the dash, the uh, power block there. This is the fuel line coming up. Uh, we gotta finish up, go to the carburetor. But we got the inside of the fenders painted. Doghouse, that's pretty much a matty black. And um, get that done I still gotta get this front bumper uh, brace installed it goes you know down here to these bolts on each side I just got stuck in there for now just kind of get it out of the way because I got tired of working around it chirping around it but in the inside we got some kill mat all the way on the inside of it on the floor for sound deadening uh, in the uh, firewall and I got the uh, heater box in there and this is some of the painless I just kind of got it sim somewhat routed in there um, I need to get the dash in there before I really start routing the wiring for the uh, gauges and the, you know the lights and the steering column and all that stuff but um, It's just a work in progress. Like I said, I'll probably do a video, a little bit of a video on this front suspension 
suspension. I got everything out. Um, I got these cleaned up. Ball joints are out. The bushings are out. And as you can see, that's hollow. So when you try to press them bushings out, these try to, you know, squeeze in and get wappy jawed and stuff. So it was a challenge to get them out, but I managed. And getting the, getting them in would probably be about the same. So once you start pressing it in from the uh, outside in, you know, you might start stretching it out. So we'll see what happens. We'll we'll figure it out. But that's it. That's the 78. Um, like I said, we got it all painted and and clear coated. I didn't get a lot of paint on here. I got two coats on it. Um, and it was my mistake. I told her to get a gallon. I really kind of figured a gallon to cover this with two coats, possibly three, but I was wrong. And um, let me switch this around and get this on the thing here. But I was wrong. It, uh, it took a lot more paint than that. So I put uh, two good coats on it. And I really wanted three. I wanted a covering coat and then a, uh, another coat. And then I wanted what they call a drop coat, which when you're painting metallics, you lower the air pressure and you you know, we raised the air gun up to about 20 inches and you just kind of float it on there and let that metallic really set and settle. And I didn't get a chance to do that, but it still turned out good. And uh, I usually, when I paint, I like to get at least a uh, covering coat of clear and then really kind of two covering coats. A covering coat of clear, then a medium wet coat, and then on the third coat, just kind of a heavy coat. So I'll have enough to, um, uh, you know, buff and polish and, and sand out, you know, color sand out and stuff like that. So, but I only got like uh, a covering coat and a heavy wet coat of clear on this. Um, I did some buffing and polishing and um, it turned out okay, but I wasn't comfortable with it. I mean, I had to um, really kind of be conservative with it but when you put enough material on there to where you're comfortable you can color sand and buff and polish then you really ain't got to really stress too much about it so if you're painting your car if you're painting this car or like the 92 um, I would recommend going with about a gallon and a half of paint that way you may have some extra for touch up but that way uh, you can get everything covered like you want. Um, the difference, see, I had enough clear coat on my 92 because I went with a different, I went with a higher solid matrix clear coat. And it really kind of came with a gallon and a half, the way you mix it and stuff. Um, with this, I kind of got a universal clear. And it was basically a gallon and then you're harder. So I kind of shorted myself out about a half a gallon by going with this, um, which was an extra coat or a really heavy third coat. Um, so keep that in mind if you decide to paint your car. Go with about a gallon and a half of clear so you can make sure you get enough material on there to um, give yourself some uh, leadway on um, buffing, uh, uh, color sanding, buffing, and polishing. Because once you start, you get clear on it, you start sanding, getting the orange peel and everything out of there, making a nice smooth surface. Any kind of a body line or edge or whatever that, you know, or whatever is um, going to carry a lot thinner coat than a flat surface. And uh, another tip is um, just put some tape. Tape on your edges or on your um, any kind of a body line and um, just stay away from it and just color sand and buff and polish all your big flat surfaces. Uh, that way you don't have a chance of sanding through or buffing and polishing through or whatnot. Because there ain't nothing more that's, that's going to break your heart than 
go through all this trouble painting your car and then you're buffing and polishing it or your color sanding it and you you sand through. That's just gonna that's gonna suck. So um, just keep that in mind. Now this winter it'll probably be a little later. It'll probably be all you third gen guys like my ninety two Camaro. I did a lot of videos on that. I'm going to um, <clears throat> I'm going to beef up the rear end a little bit. Now factory, it's a seven and a half, seven point six five rear end. I seriously thought about putting a four nine inch in it, but I don't know if I really want to spend the money on that because I'm thinking I'm not taking it to the track. I'm not racing people. I'm not hot riding down the road, but I do want a posse track. So I'm going to get a limited slip differential. I'm going to keep my seven and a half. I'm going to get a good, you know, Richmond gear or something, a really good gear. Uh, and I'm going to go to a 373. Because right now this is factory. And I think uh, when I changed the rear differential, I looked it up. I looked, I counted the gears. It was like a 292, 293. So it's a really low gear. I mean, it's a highway gear. It's really high gear. It's a highway gear. So I'm going to go with a 373. I'm going to go with a limited slip uh, with some rich, Richmond gears. Um, so I'll do some videos on that, on how to, if you want to go with the posi track. And uh, like I said, I'm keeping the factory housing. I'm keeping the factory size. If you're going to go drag stripping, if you're out racing, if you're really hammering on it, if you got a lot of horsepower, or turbo or something like that, and you're under the hood, then yeah, you want to go with something a little beefier. But I don't. You know what I mean? Um, I got a mild cam in mine. I got a low compression. Sounds good. It uh, does good. It's fast. It smokes the tires. For me, that's really all I'm doing with it. You know, I'm driving it back and forth to work. I'm driving it on the weekends. You know, I'm laying a patch every now and then, show off, or whatever. But if I was wanting to take it to the strip, or if I was really serious, seriously like, you know, racing people or whatever, I'd, I'd put some beefy in there, but I'm not. So that's what I'm doing. I'll do some videos on that. I'm gonna probably change the axle bearings Obviously, all the bearings, and I'll probably put new axles in it because I think I'm going to go to limited slip 30 spline differential instead of the factory 26 or whatever it's in it, 27, 26. So I'll do some videos on that and, uh, you know, maybe help some of you guys out and um, that aren't real familiar with it. And uh, we're going to do more videos on the 78 throughout the winter. I just wanted to give you guys a little update. Uh, I haven't did a lot of videos, but um, keep tuned in. You know, like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys like to see. Um, I know I got a lot of views on the um, <coughs> sorry the ninety two when I went from throttle body to carburetor. Got a lot of views on that. A lot of people want to see that. How you do it questions on transmission and wiring and computers and everything else and I get it so uh, I don't know I got a buddy who's got a couple vehicles with rider bodies he wants to go to carburetor so if I can talk him into doing it I'll do a full video on um, I mean, on the 92, I just told you how to do it, you know, what what to do, your, you know, your tips and tricks and stuff. But this time, I'll, I'll, film, I'll film the whole video of um, me actually doing it, and you guys can actually get a visual, see, uh, see the outcome. So maybe that's uh, something you guys would like. Uh, I know I've had some people had you know, trucks, cars, 92, uh, or third gen Camaros or, you know, blazers and, you know, jimmies, whatever, whatever has the throttle body in it from the late eighties, early, you know, up to the late nineties. Um, 
might be interested in it. So, but anyway, I haven't forgot about you guys. Uh, I'm going to try to get back out here in the shop, do some more videos, keep you updated on the 78 as it progresses. It's going to be a nice car. It really is. Um, she's got a 600, 650 Holly in this. It's pretty ratted out. I might rebuild the Holly, you know, and do a video on that so you guys can kind of get an idea on what you need to do to rebuild your uh, your Holly and how to clean it out and uh, how to jet it, you know, squirters and all that stuff. So but anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I'll start filming videos. So hit like and subscribe. Get you know, keep tuned in, and. Um, We'll kind of go from there. Thanks for watching.